Self-imposed video game challenges are a pretty common thing people do across all types of games, from beating Mario in as few jumps as possible, to beating Hollow Knight without collecting soul, to beating entire Left 4 Dead campaigns using only a medkit as a weapon. Though there is one particular type of challenge that everyone loves to see regardless of the game being played, being chased down by some bloodthirsty, unstoppable, omnipotent being as your only form of defense is to run for your life and pray that you can outlast it. This type of challenge has taken many forms over the years, with one of the most popular examples in recent history being the Gmod Next Boss, though it is far from the only example out there. While these are all fan-made challenges, some games have actually implemented similar ideas and entities into their games, and The Binding of Isaac is no exception to this. Enter the star of today's video, none other than Tainted Jacob. <laughs> Much like his regular counterpart, Tainted Jacob has amassed quite the reputation over his years, with some heralding him as one of the hardest characters to play and complete, while others say that he's really not that bad and as a matter of fact, is arguably in the higher end of the tier list. Both arguments raise valid points, though oftentimes a solid conclusion is never reached during discussions, which is what I aim to try and do today. In today's video, we'll be looking into both sides of these arguments to find out if Tainted Jacob is just as good, or just as bad, as people really say he is. Tainted Jacob is, initially, a rather unassuming character. He has completely average stats, with the only exception being his slightly higher tiers, which results in a boost to his total damage per second. Tainted Jacob also starts with his unique pocket active item, Amina Solar. When used, Amina Solar will bind the enemy closest to Tainted Jacob for 5 seconds, rendering them completely unable to move or attack during that time. Oh my God! Amina Solar can be used once every 15 seconds. Something that has likely caught your attention is the fact that Esau is nowhere to be found. This is because, unlike their stock counterpart, you only ever get to play as Jacob solo and not as a duo. While this does mean you lose perks such as combined damage per second, double bombs and double trinkets, it also means you don't have any of the downsides of having a brother. You don't have to share any of your resources, you don't have to worry about getting stuck on rocks or spikes. You can engage in bizarre recreational activities without a whiny little bitch telling you you're going to be late for boss rush. And best of all, you don't have to suffer constant, gruesome, grotesque, and objectively unfair deaths. For about 30 seconds at the start of each floor. This is Dark Esau. He's like regular Esau, except dark, evil, fucked up looking, and worst of all, he's ginger. Dark Esau will spawn after approximately 30 seconds, erupting from the ground in a fiery fit of rage before he begins his pursuit of Jacob. For the remainder of the floor, Dark Esau will chase Jacob around, speeding up when far away and slowing down when he draws near. He will never actively try to touch Jacob, instead leaving a small gap between the two whenever possible. However, if Jacob lines up cardinally with Dark Esau, he will charge up and perform a powerful dash attack before launching himself towards Jacob, barreling through anything in his way before skidding to a halt and resuming his pursuit. While Esau is dangerous, you aren't completely defenseless against him. When Dark Esau enters the floor, Amina Solar changes functions ever so slightly, instead prioritizing Esau over other enemies. When chained, Esau will also be immobile and unable to attack. But once the timer expires, he will perform a super dash which can cross even the largest rooms in mere seconds. Although Dark Esau may not immediately come across as particularly threatening or problematic, rest assured that getting hit by Esau is one of the most single, most debilitating mistakes that can turn even the strongest runs into nothing more than piles of ash and dust. Getting hit by Dark Esau doesn't kill you, nor does it damage you. It instead causes you to experience spontaneous exorcism, ripping your feeble soul from its mortal coils, thus turning you into the lost, okay. with no holy mantle. This means that, regardless of how much health you had prior to getting hit, 
One wrong move, one silly mistake, and it's back to the start of the run. But don't give up hope just yet. You may be a ghost, but you're not dead. If Jacob is able to reach the next floor without dying, his soul will be returned to his body safe and sound, and Dark Easel will be dragged down to the bottom of the burning abyss. Nice! At least until the timer runs out again. Before we move on, there's a few little details we need to go over. Firstly, using Amina Solar inside of an empty room will immediately summon Dark Esaur regardless of how much time is left until he would normally appear. Second, while chained, Dark Esaur deals no contact damage and will also be unable to transform you, letting you use this to squeeze out of what may be a normally inescapable scenario. And finally, enemies that are chained up with Amina Solar can be released early by activating Amina Solar again while they're already chained. This also applies to Dark Esau, who will perform his Super Dash immediately upon being released. And now that we've covered all the basic information, we can begin to dissect the many arguments surrounding our not-so-dynamic duo. Okay. So for the entire duration of the run, save for the occasional admittedly brief grace period, I am being hunted down by a bloodthirsty spirit of whom I am powerless to stop, and if I get hit once by him, then I am practically a dead man walking. How on earth could anyone reasonably say this character has any positive aspects? Is both the normal and frankly understandable response to playing Tainted Jacob for the first time, Though, as you can probably guess from this video, there are a few very notable plus points that our little friend here has, and given the fact that the negatives are borderline self-explanatory, we'll be analysing these points first. I mentioned earlier that during his dash attack, Dark Heasel will barrel through anything in his path in order to hit Jacob, and I meant anything, including other living creatures that are unfortunate enough to be caught in the crossfire. If Esau collides with an enemy while dashing, he will set them on fire and begin dealing massive amounts of contact damage, which in some cases can kill some early to mid game bosses in a singular strike. Outside of his dash attack, Esau can also rack up contact damage extremely quickly by merely touching enemies while walking. He can even deal damage to enemies who walk into him while he's chained. Dark Esau's destructive friendly fire doesn't quite end just yet. Something important to note is Esau is invincible and cannot be killed or removed in any way, only stalled via a Nema Solar. This means that shooting him simply causes him to phase through your tears, but while your tears will pass through him, enemy tears won't. This means that if used with caution, Dark Esau can be used as a shield to block incoming projectiles and can even be directed to dash into them, destroying them and potentially nullifying large swarms of bullets in one fell swoop. Both of these traits, however, are made infinitely more powerful with the use of Anima Solar. Anima Solar grants you much more control of Esau for a period of time, and with that control you can manually hold him down in front of incoming attacks, or send him hurtling directly into a horde of unsuspecting monsters, tearing him apart like freshly cooked mince and clearing even the largest rooms in seconds flat. The final major positive points come in the form of Jacob's soul, which may come as a surprise to you as dying in one hit isn't what any normal person considers good by any metric. But while being turned into the lost is incredibly detrimental midway through a floor, it becomes invaluable and even run changing during the cleanup phase. For example, if there are any items or pickups that are inaccessible the first time you see them, you can transform into the lost once you clear the floor and then come back for them. But this is admittedly small potatoes compared to the true potential of our newly acquired incorporeal state of being. The Lost Form also allows you to cheese important story objectives, such as flying over the entire mine's chase sequence and opening the mausoleum door for free. But by far the 
best perk, and arguably Tainter Jacob's biggest strength. The Lost Form allows you to take one free Devil Deal, regardless of the cost of the deal or your total health. When used in tandem with your regular HP, Dark Esaw becomes a free deal coupon, letting you make absurdly powerful deals for a fraction of the usual cost, which also makes Tainted Jacob one of the most efficient Devil Deal characters in the game alongside Tainted Keeper and the Losts. It's safe to say that the benefits Tainted Jacob has are surprisingly effective in nearly every important statistic, from offense to utility. But not always sunshine and rainbows for our traitorous con artist, for it is time to face the reality that is Dark Easel's true nature. While Dark Easel does make a rather efficient tool, he isn't a tool by design. He's an independent entity with his own thoughts and motivations, and those motivations involve putting you six feet underground in a box by any means necessary. The negative points that stem from his oppressive behaviour, bizarrely enough, are almost identical to many of the problems faced by regular Jacob and Esau, though presented in a slightly different manner. These problems can be summarised into three main points, navigation, combat and survival. Starting with navigation, Jacob and Esau find this tricky due to them often getting caught on rocks, pits, spikes and other environmental hazards and as a result, they have to manoeuvre around the average room vastly differently to avoid getting caught or taking accidental damage from potential threats. Tainted Move Jacob out, faces out. a similar Move. issue. Move. While he doesn't have the risk of getting stuck on obstacles, Dark Esau can easily intercept you and can find on narrow passageways, blocking off paths that you need to go and generally making moving around more difficult than usual forcing you to approach more complex room layouts in a more strategic manner, especially if the room contains enemies. Next is combat. Jacob and Esau struggle due to their larger combined hitbox, which makes it hard for them to deal with hordes of enemies and extremely difficult to dodge more complex attack patterns that require more precise and calculated movement, the latter of which is most notable during final bosses. While Tainted Jacob doesn't have a functionally wider hitbox, he does still struggle with the lack of space caused by Dark Esau constantly being by your side. Since Dark Esau behaves entirely differently and separately from other enemies, regular rooms require some extra nuance in order to avoid taking any damage, as Dark Esau rarely, if ever at all, syncs up with the room's intentional loop. Tough bosses are equally problematic as Esau can hold valuable space hostage which may be needed to safely weave around and between attacks. This becomes especially prominent against bosses who force you into tight spaces with their attacks such as Mother or Hush. Finally, general survival. As a whole, Jacob and Esau struggle due to the game simply not being designed with their gimmick in mind. No enemy, room or boss accounts for the possibility of the player having a double sized hitbox, with half of it potentially being weaker due to having less HP. Tainted Jacob is a similar case. No room, enemy or boss accounts for you being constantly pursued and having to deal with a second lethal threat trailing behind you who also heavily restricts how you approach normally basic tasks and your ability to dodge incoming enemy attacks efficiently. In fact, when directly compared, Jacob and Esau and Tainted Jacob share almost the exact same set of problems, albeit with the finer details being parallel to suit. Despite various faucets of Isaac being tweaked to help them out as much as possible, they still struggle a great deal trying to perform actions that no other character struggles with, such as moving around obstacles, dodging intricate attack patterns, and having a much harder time surviving runs as a whole. And with both arguments for and against Tainted Jacob laid out on the table, it's quite easy to see why some have grown to love him while others have grown to hate him. But with all our points established, it's time to answer the burning question I asked during the intro. Before we come to our final conclusion, let's quickly summarise all the points we talked about that are both for and against Tainted Jacob. 
With the use of Dark Esau, Tainted Jacob has some of the highest damage output in the game, alongside some surprisingly potent, readily available defense that can nullify entire columns of enemy projectiles in mere seconds. The Soul Form, while ordinarily a crux, can prove to be a valuable source of utility, allowing you to collect extra resources at the end of the floor, and even make deals with a devil that would, under normal circumstances, be completely impossible. Unfortunately, much like his regular counterpart, the Binding of Isaac is not designed around his gimmick of being hunted down for the duration of the run. And despite the many fail saves the game puts in place to help you as much as possible, Tainted Jacob ultimately struggles with basic tasks such as moving around obstacle heavy or claustrophobic rooms, fighting enemies and bosses with more convoluted attacks, and overall surviving as a whole. With all our points established, it's time to answer the question. Is Tainted Jacob just as bad as people say he is, or do we ought to give him more credit? Well, in my personal yet heavily debatable opinion, I think that Tainted Jacob is... Actually, a lot better than people give him credit for. Let's go! Let's go! No! Let's go! You should have knew what time it was, boy! Victory! When I started playing Tainted Jacob over a year ago, I, like many players, was under the impression that he was nothing more than a miserable, boring slog to play through. But as time has passed and I've gained more experience with him, I've come to enjoy him much more than I ever thought I would. Make no mistake, Tainted Jacob is by no means an easy character. It will require much more time to learn and understand than the average character, but that practice will result in him not only being a powerful force to be reckoned with, but also make it much easier to mitigate his downsides, even more so than regular Jacob and Esau. Tainted Jacob is an incredibly sharp double-edged sword. He holds a lot of power, but can easily lose all of that power with one or two silly mistakes. But I don't think that makes him a bad character by any means. He definitely isn't a contender for S tier or best character in the game, like some people may argue. But with some See? time and practice, I think so people would be pleasantly surprised God at how right. effective and, dare I say, even fun Tainted Jacob can truly be. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, you know, re remember to like and subscribe so I can afford to fill my drinks cabinet with gasoline this month. And um, yeah, see ya. Also, I got Twitter. Go check that out.